My first guest tonight is television personality, Bon Viver, writer, one-time seller of vacuum cleaners, Fanny Craddock. Well, then, when I was 18 months old, my mother took me to my grandmother's house to wish her a happy birthday. When she got there, she realised that she'd forgotten to bring a present. So she promptly stuffs me on the billiards table and goes upstairs to see my grandma. Well, in due course, they hear these terrible screams coming from the billiard table. My grandmother comes down the stairs wearing nothing but a turkey towel wrapped around her stout self. She seizes me from the billiards table turns to my mother and says, Bijou, you are not fit to have a child. <laughs> to which mummy replies, you can have her as a birthday present. And then, of course, I stayed with Granny until I was ten. Can I ask you what might seem a naive question? Why? I should have thought that was perfectly obvious, dear. Mummy had me when she was only 15. I had a wonderful, wonderful childhood. Kitchen staff were very friendly. <laughs> Wizened lamb chops and greying mashed potato. Bog standard post war fare. That's what one saw dolloped out daily. BFC before Fanny Craddock. What they seem to forget, dear, is that it's my neck. It's I that has to stand before the millions and hold the whole mess together. It only takes one slip. Do you see? A bit. Well, the trick is to forget you're in the studio. You just pretend it's at home. I'm the one who stands to lose everything. Dolly! I'm going to have my bath. Oh, good. Bad sign. Broken ladies. Nothing, honest. <laughs> How big are those trunks? Is that anything like the way I showed you? Those are going to fit into faggots, are they? Hmm? Show me the rabbit. I'll see it. this I did it should have smooth sharp claws and a very close cleft of the lips I know would you like to see the pastry no 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 too soft too flabby dear god you just can't get the help I've never done Normandy rabbit insider on television before I need everything to be absolutely Where's the cider? I think it might be having its bath. I don't believe this. You have that bath yet? Very nearly. See you standing before me dressed in the kitchen in exactly four minutes. <laughs> Green is fine. I want Thank you. What do you need me for? Do I look like a lesbian in this? No. Please, none of this going to West London via Kent. I want over the river. Earl's Court, Hammersmith, Shepherd's Butchel. That's what I was planning. I do not want the bloody tour of London. I am a professional with a job to do, and when I arrive there, I need to be able to present the programme. I don't want to turn up with a horrific migraine because you've insisted on finding the girls all the way. I want, and if anybody wants to stop for a week, there will be a Absolutely incredible. Fucking unbelievable. 
United Dairies could have got us here in less time. She's at it today, isn't she? Even by her standards. It's Peter's birthday. Oh. Oh, right. And Peter is? He's the son. But not by Johnny. Yes, and? Well, don't ask me. All I ever got was... Peter. He's in Kenya at the moment, dear. Oh, and... Uh... Poor Peter. He had such a weak chin. Sawdust off my bench, please. You know the form. No direct communication. Craddock! No guess. Oh, fuck. Can you tell this gentleman to get all the sawdust off my benches? Hello. Hello, Major Craddock. Nice to see you again. Yes. It's Michael, isn't it? That's right. How are you? Oh, uh, you know, mustn't... Uh... Can you clear the sawdust from this Yeah, area? you're dead right. No guess. We were down at that. It is a bit of a down at that, isn't it? Right pain in the neck. About the size of it, yeah. Well, any chance of getting a fix, do you think? Oh, I don't know. See, I'm not supposed to disconnect wipes. Oh, dear. I am allowed to connect and that's not a problem. How about if I threaten to cut off your tiny little balls and pop them in a fricassee? Will that move things on a bit? What? Get it fixed, ducky, or I will bury this right in the pit of your stomach. Oh, just... The way to a man's heart. Derek! Thank you. Everything ready? Yes, everything. Service is clean. Uh, it's spotless. Didn't see your wipe. I have done. OK, getting ready for a take then, please. Thank you. I'm the ready. You bloody need for them if there's no gas. There is gas. I need to be ready for her. Ready to greet her. Who? The young middle-class housewife. Which young middle-class housewife? All of them. Tea break. Ten minutes, please. All right. Oh, yes, very, 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 very all right. Are you, um... Is it, is it because... Because what? Because today is. Johnny, this series is essential. Crucial. So is the last one. Arc lights up, please. Run VT for clock. Ambitious cooking, episode one. Go grabs. You make a single error and there will be hell to pay, all right? Hello. Well, let me guess. Hubby's come home and he's dropped a bombshell. He's invited the boss around for dinner and what on earth are we having? Well, resisting the temptation to grab a rolling pin and give what for, we need to be able to provide. So let's start with a variation of mine on... Ballotine du Great big hands on her. And <clears throat> this curious... Ah, the opiate of the misses. It's so that I can lift up the skin there and get my hand right under there in order for me to insert my mushrooms. Now, this won't do very much for the bird's figure. But then, again, it won't do very much for ours, now will it? Well, you know, I believe that food and wine should be regarded as partners. And as in any happy marriage, one should complement the other. And as you know, my husband is an unimpeachable authority on wine. So, darling, wine, please. Uh, with chicken, I thought a Beaujolais, which is served at room temperature, although these days many people here and in France prefer it 
slightly chilled. No, Johnny, not on the BBC. <laughs> Although, that is gorgeous on the nose. Well, thank you for that. That bossy thing she does, and him the soak. It's very clever. That's the edge. Get that bed really secure, and Derek's going to take that away so that I can show you now my goujat. Thank you so much, dear. Well, in a moment's time, I shall open the door of that oven, and my goujat should have risen to about two inches above the rim of the tin. If it hasn't, I shall look a complete clot and I promise faithfully never to darken the studio doors again. Putting on my oven gloves. Close up on, on one. We don't want any burnt mitts because this will be very hot indeed. And there is your Burgundian Gougère or Gougère Bourguignon. She's too Ready bloody good. To present. Well, thank you so much. For watching. It's been a real pleasure having you with me, and I hope I shall have the pleasure of having you with me again next week. Goodbye. And cut and set for episode two, please. Okay, and cut, set for episode two. You passed right in front of camera three, totally obscuring my egg dishes. Yes, I know, I'm, I'm sorry. You want to see omelette, dear, not ungainly puffs dancing about with spatulas. Just watch it. You know, Gilbert Harding and I had a huge row at a party once. I cold shouldered him all evening, and he shouted across to me, Madam, would you at least look at me when I'm trying to apologise? <laughs> he was a card, wasn't he? Oh, he's an extraordinary chap. Terribly unhappy, though. Died miserable. How was your steak, Johnny? A bit tough. Well, you know, there are three ways of doing steak, Simon. Raw, medium, and ruined. <laughs> He may have died miserable, dear, but at least he wasn't boring. You know, I know someone who'd be very taken with you. Dan Fast. You'd be just the thing. A little chat over the table. Me mm. and Johnny, we always appear together. Oh, yeah, certainly the more the merrier. Now, I rather like this tune. It's midnight in King Hill. Oh, is that what it's called? How oh, clever. Chin chin, everybody. Oh, cheers, yes, cheers. Well, Peter didn't show his face. She's on her own then. <laughs> Just him. I don't know. There is another. But he's not Johnny's either. Helmets are nice. That uh, colour you were thinking? Oatmeal. Mm. You don't think it's not a bit bland? Is it? No, it's clean, bright, modern. It's just the fireplace now. Horrid thing. You want rid of the fire? No, just the surround. Green. It spoils the room. Beaujolais was an excellent choice, darling. Did you see the boys on the monitor today? Prissy little things. I hope people don't look at them and think, oh, she made them. Fruit of her loins. Wouldn't have thought so. Mm. 
Let's get this fasten thing done. Could be a very big step forward for us. Oh, uh, Frank rang. Jane. They wonder if we can put her up for a couple of weeks. You said no. Uh, in fact, I said, in theory, we could possibly. Oh, superb. Thank you. A child under my feet. As if I'm not under enough pressure as it is with a major tour of the UK, a new series on the box, and this farce and bastard coming to catch me out. What, do you want to turn this place into a fucking nursery? I mean, why not open a branch of Dr Bernardo's and have done? Off you go now, Johnny dear. Chin chin. Well now, I'd like to share with you a few memories from our holidays to the Greek islands last year. The bizarre little markets, the breathtaking boat journeys, and of course, the dolphins, which are served in little round bowls with a red pepper sauce at the poolside buffet. But just try to stop the Greeks from stewing them. The Greeks will stew, they can't help themselves. And as I finish, Ripping off Mr. Crabbe's legs, I'm going to hand those over to Derek, who's going to scoop out the lovely white meat that we all enjoy so much. Poor oh dear, his hands are shaking. It's very nervous when he's on the television. I only shake for the first half minute. Hello, Jane. Very nice to see you. Come here. Hello, Jane, dear. Let me look at you. Oh, goodness me, how long is it since we've seen you, dear? Um, about two years, two I think. Years. Goodness <laughs> me, how a girl can change in two years. Quite <laughs> Gosh. Well, Johnny will take your back. Sorry. Come on through, dear. This is Derek and Simon, my live-in helpers. Absolute godsend, without whom I could not function. How do you do? <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're just um, preparing breakfast, in actual fact, if you'd like some, dear. Mm, yes, please. Yes. Derek, will you set Jane a place, dear? Thank you. Johnny will pull you up a chair. Oh, Jane, would you just get the toast for me, dear, before it burns? Bless you. Just butter it for me, darling. That's it, dear. Nice and even, please. That's how she gets you. Start small, buttering toast. Next thing, we're doing a peach melba. Excuse me, Mr. Parson. What do you think? Mmm, it's lovely. Smooth yeah. aftertaste. Is there any more? Things are all right. In what sense? Well, she doesn't um, doesn't exactly smother you with affection. <laughs> well, he's on duty, you see. Far too busy to. Oh, uh, because we're here. Yes, that's right. All this guilt, regency stuff. Yes. But he's rather proud. Is she? <laughs> this had better be perfect. My reputation is on the line today. Again. What's that for? Food colouring, dear. Could you study this? No, the bread just the bread. I'm just going to have a snooze in the living room. We need to dig underneath the polite dinner party, chap. Get her talking about bedsit years. She'll probably give a bit more if you get her rattled. That's a piece of cake. The woman was born rattled. Did I say born? I meant quarried. How are we doing? Fanny?
John and Fanny Craddock are the nation's premier TV chefs. They are soon to appear in a new series which will be watched by some five million housewives. Quite honestly, to my mind, your whole approach seems to be the antithesis of good cooking. E even the butter has to be dolled up with gold leaf. Surely, surely the best cooking is simple food, beautifully cooked. You're absolutely, absolutely right. Couldn't be more right. So why do you insist on dolling everything up like this? No, no, we don't doll things up, Ducky. <laughs> now let me just explain. This is a very, very elaborate home. And when one has a lot of Regency and guilt, one likes the butter to look the same. Mm. All right? Now this, in French, is called an assiette de fruits de mer, which we think is rather fun. Rather fun. You do realise they're moving? <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> Do the quality of champagne, probably. <laughs> oh, the, the winkles, dear, that they've been boiled. Well, uh, this one <laughs> seems to have crawled away off of the plate. Really? <laughs> Quite. <laughs> <It> fell off. <laughs> That's... Oh, look, look. It's, it's, it's moving. Give it to me. It's perfectly right. This this one is moving. <laughs> this is obviously just a live one that's fallen in. Uh, there's, there's quite a few waving their little heads in the air. <laughs> so which are you having? Live ones or dead ones? I'm watching her. I thought we agreed. It's as close as I'm going to get, isn't it? But... You were a joke on the telly, you know. Everyone laughs at you because you're drag and you don't know it. That's your tragedy. Go to your room! <laughs> if only the cameras were still rolling. How's that pub of yours? Oh, I had to, um, sell it on. <laughs> And how much did you manage to piss up the walls whilst you still had it? <laughs> you painted horror! Yes, well, you could sod off back to Soho and Dutch and King Street waiting for you. I have never been so embarrassed. Oh, but you handled it beautifully. You completely turned the tables on him. Do you think so? Absolutely. You're so clever. Live ones or dead ones. It's fantastic. What do you think, Johnny? Oh, a triumph. Real wit. Good. Oh, my mother taught me all I know about repos, so... Good. Onwards, then. You need to get this party out of the way if you'd like to help me, Jane, dear. Excitement just isn't good for her. You are heaven sent. You're not planning to... I'm not ripping out the fireplace. I rather like it. Why? I thought we... Bloody house. So... What? It's our home. It's what it's we... It's also bloody clean, isn't it? So shiny and beige and clean and bright. So wipe clean. So bloody. I want to call my mother, all right? Mr. Alan Taylor, <laughs> Prince Dimitri and Princess Beris Kandara. Dame Daniela Haynes, Sir Shawnee for Mrs. Gosh. Jean Huggins. Everybody must try the shrimp bucket. <laughs> this way, everybody. <laughs> Johnny, mingle with the melon balls. Please save one of those. Oh, thank you. 
thing. Your husband, he's a very obedient soul. Well, I get my way with Craddock on trivia. <laughs> but uh, on matters of a major policy, as a girlfriend once said, a, a mule is capricious in comparison to Craddock. <laughs> <laughs> Can I interest you in an egg bag? Very nice. No. So the bossing him around then, that's just an act, is it? Precisely, an act. An act which we rehearse diligently and often. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you've done a good job of peddling those. Well, people don't seem very keen. Mrs. Craddock, there's a phone call for you. Not now, Simon. I do think you should. Simon, as you can see, I'm immersed in fascinating conversation with two of my dearest friends. He did say it was urgent. Something about being your son. Are you sure? Please excuse me. Please excuse me. Which one is it, Peter? No, the other one. How did you know there was anything wrong? Darling? Hello, Mrs. Craddock speaking. Who is this? Oh. Darling? You all right? Fine. It, um, Christopher. We have guests. Christopher, where did he come from? Oh. Conceived in hatred and born in fear, darling. Perhaps the coat de Rhone pushed the boat out. Oh, don't be ridiculous. As if I'd let you use some cheap pong with partridge. We're having burgundy. The audience is better to have burgundy with. That's him. Yes. You want me to? Christopher. some photographs from when I was a boy. That's wonderful. Have you eaten? Mm. So, after a minute or two of this, Mummy pipes up and she had the most wonderfully grave voice. <laughs> Fanny, dear, be a good girl now. Run along and play on the railway tracks. <laughs> railway track. <laughs> <laughs> and what about Peter? What's he like? Oh, Peter, he's lovely, dear. He's in chemo at the moment. Oh. On safari, eh? You've grown into such a handsome young man, <laughs> hasn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that lovely strong chin. <laughs> That's a good chin. How's the house in Cambridge? Well, it's not much, you know. It's a bit small. Well, you must come and live with us. <laughs> That'd be lovely. But I think we'd best stay where we are at present. We? Oui. My wife, Nikki. She's a manicurist. Nails. And our son, Julian. Oh. <laughs> the grandmother! 
Granny Fanny. <laughs> oh, I absolutely must meet him. Promise me you'll bring him next time. Of course. They're both dying to meet you. And I they. <laughs> Serve it. Bye then, Christopher. Yep. See you next Tuesday. Bye. Bye bye. You're right. Did I hug him too often? <laughs> no, no. Did I hug him enough? You was fine. You were fine. Right. We're having the burgundy and that's fine. Isn't he marvellous, darling? So handsome. Such a good, strong chin as well. I mean... Quality stock, you see. Such a hearty appetite. He ate up absolutely everything. Yes, he is quite Imagine a... Him on the screen. Near Granny. Granny Fanny. <laughs> we must get some supplies in, darling. Need to start planning. We could phone Fortnum's, or actually, we could even pop over to France. <laughs> Did she give you that tie? Yes. And the cufflinks. She was overjoyed. Don't know why I didn't get in touch with her years ago. I was thinking. The fireplace. But I agree. I think we should keep it. It'd be a shame and... We could get some more colour in. Have it so it's a bit different. What do you think? Good. All right. If she wants to meet you, we'll take the boy. But I want you both to make a good impression, all right? Well, of course. Just don't go on and on about the decor. Dead giveaway. You know, my son Christopher often says to me, Mum, you don't do it. No! Sorry about that noise. We need those for later. My son Christopher often says to me, Mum, you don't do enough to keep the young uns amused. Well, these are really rather jolly. They're my banana candles. Pineapple rings for the base of the candle. Four bananas rolled in jam. I've used raspberry. You can use apricot if your purse will stretch to it. Then a rolled in chopped nuts, and finally very fine strips of perfectly economic green angelica that we bend to form, thank you dear, the handles of the candle, you can put that down. And finally, Simon has been working away on my little glacé cherry petals for the flames. And perhaps you'd like to help me dear to secure the flame into the top of Mr. Banana. And my grandson will certainly make very short work of one of these. Thank you, Johnny, dear. But now, alas, it's time for us to break the heart of a young lettuce. Thank you. Well, that was fantastic. Bless you, dear. It was adequate. <laughs> I was actually planning a goose, but uh, they're a little hard to get hold of just now. What birds do you go in for, Nicky, dear? Well, mainly chicken. In sandwiches? We do have casseroles. Uh, carrots and mushrooms. Sounds lovely. <laughs> so, uh, where are you planning on sending him to school? Um, St Matthew's. It's a local school. You hadn't thought about Eton? It's a bit outside our means. Eton it is. We'll sort out the feeds. 
That's really very kind of you. <laughs> you will have to change his name to Craddock, though, for tax reasons. Yours as well, in fact. Oh, right. Um, OK. So, Nicky, dear, I understand this boy of mine is really rather good around the house. Oh, yes. He does all the decorating. Mm. Well, I've got a couple of jobs need doing. Maybe you could spare a day or two, come and stay over. I'd love to. And this little cheeky, cheeky chap, mm? come and stay with Granny Betty. Mm? That'd be fun. And then you think about that woman next door that you've never really liked, but you were too well-bred to say what you thought of her. And so you take it out on your duck and you give it a really good stab in. Really stab your thoughts into the duck. Don't worry about it bouncing around. It doesn't mind. Speaking. No, I'm so sorry, Nikki dear. He was here earlier, but unfortunately, he and Johnny have just this minute popped into town. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll certainly let him know that you called. Again. Hit him hard. You should. Uh... Well, she isn't dead. We didn't even like her that much. All the same. Putting your wife in the loony bin. Help That'll me be them. Oh. So, where are we? She's being assessed tomorrow. She won't be in long, I don't think. And I've told her work, the nursery. Her mother, that wasn't easy. Go on, little fellow. There we go. Just didn't oh, realize. So you've told everyone? Yeah. What now? Dinner, of course. Oh, are those the cufflinks? Oh, those are nice, aren't they? What are we drinking? The Hope Bailey. The 29? Mm-hmm. Good choice. Try this. Yes, it's very nice. <laughs> My goodness. Crepe Florentine. Do tuck in, darling. Pack full of spinach. Put hairs in your chest. <laughs> That's utterly delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Better than you will get in any restaurant. And that is only an entree. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and Morley said, Fanny, the viewers will let you get away with murder as long as you are sincere. It's all about sincerity, he said. And if you can fake that... <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Morning, Christopher. I'm going to Greenwich for breakfast and then off to Bond Street, get you some decent togs. I'll get your bar. Yeah. 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 Book me. Mirabelle restaurant this evening and then we're off to the Rivoli. I hope you can dance. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I like London. London's nice. The streets are lined with crumpet. It's a food metaphor. That's what I'm about. Should be tickled. Do, do you and Mum... Do, do you and Mum ever, um, you know, do you... Well, don't, don't ask that. Right, I, I'm, I'm, um, yes, ready. How, how much do I owe you? I thought so. Randy little bugger. Just like my brother. Hello. Who was that? Oh, Christopher. Darling Christopher. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit worried about him. Is that the milk, dear? Bring it into the kitchen, would you? And Mr. J says we won't get 3,200 for the house. You look nice. You have absolutely no right. Please. Don't shout in front of the child. I think they pick up more than we know. Come on, Julie. You can't. You, you, you can't just come in here. You have no right! She's taking him to Australia. Right, well, I'm going to court. I'm going to take it to court. All right, we'll, we'll, um, but first of all, lunch is ready. No, I'm not hungry.
I do want to help you, darling. If you'll only let me. How? I see water flowing. A rope broken. A boat breaks loose its moorings and tastes freedom. The devil will make work for idle hands. Bright, shining future. in your hand. What? It is not clear. Metal? Copper? Wide and round. A handle? A pan? revealed everything Again. All this work you do for Mum, do you get out of an evening? Perhaps we could go for a drink together. No harm in that, is there? No, thank you. I promise to be the perfect gentleman. I won't try anything. No, I'd, I'd rather not. Am I too old? No, no, I just... I don't think you've come to terms with losing your wife and son. I think you're bottling it up, so you're not ready to. Morning. Morning. Morning, Christian. Morning. No danger. What are you up to? Nothing, really. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Elizabeth, please. Jane, of course, is turning out to be the fine century. Oh, certainly is. That's daughters for you, see. Lovely, thank you. Such a lovely temperament. Real ability in the kitchen and so pretty. You'll be ready to make her first appearance with me soon. If I could, oh, thank you. Thank you. Appearance? Do you hold Mrs. Beaton at all? I do love what she does with pastry. The woman was an editor, dear, not a chef. Her husband worked her into an early grave and she never cooked a single one of the meals in her book. Whereas we taste all our recipes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What do you mean, appearance? On the stand at the ideal home. Oh. To Janet, please. Fanny's family cooking. Yes. My little protégé. <clears throat> and then I can bring her out in London, find her a suitable match, don't you see? Then we can be rid of the pensies. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, dear. Who to? I'm Jessica. I've seen a few. I'm ready for you. 
Well, now, this is one of my darling Jane's ideas, and the children absolutely love it. Now, from the leftovers, we fashion little collars for the gingerbread men, not the children. Little shoes. There we go. Little buttons for his top and even little noses, because I suppose even Mr. Gingerbread Man needs to breathe as he bakes away at gas mark seven for 20 minutes. Is this all for the home show? Yes, dear. Very busy. A lot of work involved. Are you planning on getting dressed at all? Probably. Probably. It is probably. Thank you, Jane. Jane. Why is Peter in Kenya, Mother? Do you ever visit? Or phone, even? Let's not be unpleasant, Christopher, dear. How's that unpleasant? He's my brother. Half brother. Got a lot in common. When did he come looking for you? That's enough. Go to your room. I'm going to have a bath. Are you all right? Now, um, I shall be relying on you, Jane, dear, to pass me all the utensils and ingredients and so forth. You really are crucial. Uh, I'll do my best. I hope I don't let you down. You really are like a, a daughter to me. I hope you don't mind me saying that. No, no. You remind me a little bit of a, a, another girl I had, Pamela. <laughs> had to let her go. Oh, miles better. Where is she now? She's in Kenya, dear. With Peter. They seem to like it. <laughs> well, he is dying to meet you. Look, I will organise a table. What are you doing Thursday? All right, well then keep it that way. <laughs> okay, and um, I will call you once I've sorted everything. All right. Bye bye, darling. Bye. Isn't Sylvia a little plain? Nothing wrong with a little plain. He could do with a little plain. Mm. Well, this place is disgusting. I don't know how you can cook anything in here. You get used to it. What are you like in the kitchen? Sorry? Well, do you take after your mum, cooking? God, no, not a clue. I'm hopeless. I bet you don't even know how to trust chicken. Rather old-fashioned, I know, but my wife did most of the trussing. All right, well, I'll show you, if you like. See, what he needs is a good, solid woman, not some flaky bit of skirt. No, yeah, someone that I can rely on. Hmm? Yeah. Take the string. Pull tightly and put it over the legs here. And wrap it around underneath and then cross it. That's good. Put them over the feet. Yeah. Yeah. Then round. No, 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 not like that. <laughs> Like that. How then, bloody thing? I don't want to trust a bloody chicken. I don't need to trust a bloody chicken. I'm a bloke, I don't have to. Why are you sm why are you smi I'm I'm bloody angry. I know, I just Well, we're both adults, and so I think it's silly. All the same, I'm I'm bloody pissed off. I know, I'm sorry. Look, we'll try it again, and um, this time I'll try and be intimidated and horrified. So I was saying, no, not like that, and then you said, well, how then? I 
can't do it now. Spoiled it. And that's your father? I think he was a bit of a brute to mum. She walked out. I don't remember. And Peter? She gave him to his grandparents. His father was killed in a plane crash. And that's me, aged eight, in painting, I think. What a lovely boy. What are we going to do? Hello! We're in here! He's meeting Sylvia tonight. Now, if he does not close the house in Cambridge this week, then I intend to do it for him, and I expect you to back me up. Understand? Mm -hmm. Jane, darling, you are wonderful. I, I did it, actually. Where did you learn to double kidneys? We haven't done anything. I haven't... We know. Do we? We know that there's an age difference, but... what we're going to do is be together as friends. And if she still wants me in three years, we'll get married. You'll be able to wait, will you? I think we have to give them a chance. We could live here, pay rent, or get a place in the area, you know, be a family. I forbid it. Bye. Fanny. I you know you're going to end up a sad, lonely old woman. it transpires is an unreliable trollop who cannot keep her hands off men. Now she has made several clumsy passes at my husband and has now succeeded in seducing my son. In addition to which, several priceless items of jewellery appear to have gone missing. Well, you know, it's that same thing that you and I have said time and again. You think about that woman that you've never really liked, but who is too well-bred to say anything, and so you take it out on the souffle. Have you done everything? Yes. Show me. 
Things all right? Pretty much. This house is too big. These are my egg barrels, or earth a la riga. I've taken hard-boiled eggs and left them in cold water for a quarter of an hour with a harmless vegetable dye, because one must remember to feed the eye as well as the pellet. I then slice off the broad end of the egg there, already done. I take an anchovy and slice down its centre, giving myself a nice little strip there. Wendy, dear, would you like to help me with this bit? And Wendy's going to curve the anchovy onto the body of the egg. Thank you, dear. I'm piping on mayonnaise here at the peak in a pretty rosette. I finish off by slipping on a little cap, the jaunty angle, and there you have oeuf a la riga. Well, I do hope that your dinner party goes as well as mine, and I look forward very much to seeing you with me again next week. Okay, cut, set for episode three. You did very well, Wendy, dear, thank you. Not at all, I enjoyed it. Um, how are you on two? They're not getting you right up in the gallery. Yeah, no, the uh, colour's drifting. Ought you to be. Just toasting it on your behalf. How are you feeling? Fine. By the way, I thought more about your offer. Not now, Wendy, dear. Oh, right, OK. Is it a yes or no? Well, no, I'm afraid. Right, that's fine. Let's not talk about it. What offer? Just a business venture, nothing. <clears throat> uh, sorry, excuse me, Mrs. Craddock. Can we just do a quick establishing shot if you, if you come to the front? I'm sorry, what is an establishing shot? Oh, well, you know, it's just to make sure we're capturing Could you. Could you me, Wendy? That's all. If you could hold the eggs up. There you go. That's it, fabulous. Thank you. <sighs> Better than any test card you are, love. Catering. Yes. You and a young helper running a catering business. That's right. Did the offer involve adopting Wendy at all? Trying to adopt the star. Why do you... I just need someone to stay by me. Daughter, stay by you. That it just... I am by you. I always have been. These are young people, Fanny. With their own lives. It's embarrassing. Keeping him in overnight. It's a minor coronary. He should be well enough tomorrow. Look, oh, that's very nice. Let's just get you home. You need to rest.
Wendy? Wendy, dear? Are you still awake? Yes. What's happened? Um, I'm sorry, dear, if I was horrible. I, I do hope you won't. Try and sit up. There. Okay. Put the napkin on. Nice little bit of soup and bread. There we are. Try and sit up a little bit. There. Yeah. Okay. A little sip. Mm. If you don't want it, I'll just. And thank you, Wendy, dear. As you always say, claret for longevity. Burgundy for l'amour. Let's get that there and you can reach. Don't ever do that to me again. All right. Hello everyone, well here we are once again at the festive season and the time of the year when Johnny likes to get his hands on a nice plump young bird. <laughs> <laughs> Making a change from the old boiler that he gets the rest of the year. Well, we have been actually very, very lucky you know, this year and we've got this lovely free range hen here. I'm just going to give that to Johnny and he's going to stuff it into the oven and um, we are going to do to that, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. The beaver on. They want to know if you'll judge some cookery contest, Esther Ranson thing. Go on. Woman's won the chance to cook a banquet. Edward Heath, Lord Mountbatten. Well, who is this woman? Just some housewife. It's a big day in the spotlight sort of thing. Devise her own unique recipe. I want you to give her a few hints. Do you want to do it? Well, I suppose it's work. Mm. Right, well, this shouldn't take more than half an hour, and then we could uh, pop to the Ritz for lunch. Shall we? Hello there. Uh, shall we? Bit strapped for time, so. Lovely. And here she is. Mrs. Gwen Troke from Devon. Hello. I'm ever so nervous. <laughs> Wait, cameras are rolling, dear. Good, okay. Uh, Mrs. Troke, if you'd. Sorry. We're down here in the kitchen because we wanted Gwen to meet a woman who's won as many awards but she's cooked hot dinners. TV chef, Fanny Craddock. Hello. Fanny, any hints for Gwen on her big day? What's she starting with? Seafood cocktail. <sighs> yes, you see, that is frightfully rich as a starter, and then straight into the duck. Yes. A little too rich, do you think? Far too rich, darling. Very, very sickly. The taste buds will be totally exhausted. It is rich. <laughs> yes. I mean, message to Tum. If one is starting, the seafood cocktail, and then onto the dark. That is sending some very, very rude messages to Tom. <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, darling, seafood cocktail. Bless her. So horribly English. They oh, haven't left. Funny, don't. You can't help being English. No, no, but you see, the English have no cuisine. You know, even the good old Yorkshire puddin is actually French in origin. Escoffier, as you may know or not, my darling, is my god in the kitchen. Mon dieu de cuisine. I use him for everything I'm creating in a menu where I look to revive the taste buds, not depress them with these sort of foods. Now, my darling, what sauce are you going for on the duck? Bramble. What is a bramble? Blackberry. Blackberry. With duck. 
Uh, have you thought um, about dessert at all, Gwen? Or? Oh, well, um, I thought I'd do my coffee cream that I did for the cook of the realm. Mm. And, um, well, I thought with the rum in it, it would be very nautical. Oh, that sounds delicious. It's, um, it's what I do at home and my family love it. Yes, but you're amongst professionals now, dear. I mean, you could kill pigs with that menu. Yes, sorry. Do you have any friends in Devon, dear? Yes. Living? So, still fancy the Brits? <laughs> right. Yes, I'm fine. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, very entertaining. Provocative. Ruffle a few feathers, I like it. Provocative? Yeah, well, the face pulling. Putting her down. Very brave. <laughs> brave, lucky, it's my ex. Fine, yeah. To be honest, I'm not sure they were after the box of tricks. Just cook, really. Someone who knows how long to leave his buds in. But... You've got Cyril Fletcher for the funny bits. And that. You'll be all right. You all right? Shall we? What have I done? Why? We thank you for all the work you've done for the corporation over the years. We wish you well in your future endeavours. Are you all right? For us, we can do what we like now. I don't want to do what we like. I want to be getting on with something that he's getting on with. I don't know what... Marry me. What? Look, I'm sort of done with being the stooge, the act. I think it's time you started taking me seriously. Marry me. I can't. Um, you know. oh, he died. Christopher's father, two weeks ago. He was in the personals. Mm. <sighs> so, what do you think? We do a spot of table turning. Communicate. Look into the future. I'm sure you'll be up and about in no time. Where is she? She'll be in in a minute. 
You know how mother is. Yes. I know exactly how mother is. No one. Not like me. Look after her. Of course. Where are you off to, madam? Just, uh, just stretching my legs, dear. Just soft, but hard-boiled in the centre. That's seven minutes, and all I've done is chop them up like that. Parsley, this is flat parsley. You know, all that lovely rich flavour yeah. you get from that. Christ. And all I've done is taken the leaves and broken them down like that. Next, the dressing. Olive oil. Oh dear. Did you ever see a sorrier sight? Well, never mind. All is not lost. I'm going to take the fish fingers. Don't worry, I have washed my hands. Make them to little patties. Potato. If I had some cream and dill, I would add that to it. Just shake them. And a little harmless vegetable dye. Colour, you see, must feed the eye. Please, the Maureen! She's at it again. Thank you, Fanny Craddock. See, so you have to Come on. lift the colour, dear. You raise the spirits. Thank you so much for watching. All right. me about. I know you, kid. All that. Dreadful woman that lived next door that I never really liked. I was too polite to say. Where's my supper? Here you are, madam. Dinner is served. Thank you. Of course. I do things differently. I had the chance to do them all again. Oh, yes. I wouldn't use quite as much fennel. How insensitive 